Celtic Badass of the Week showcases a person of Celtic heritage each week. Those who exemplify the give no shit attitude and come out on top. They may come from our past or our present, but rest assured they come from all walks of life and legend. They are men, women, even old ladies and pirate queens. Now you don't have to be a muscled up kilt in a fur kilt swinging a mighty sword. You can just be a 4 foot 11 Welsh woman and suffragette who knows jujitsu. Now most of these badasses are all too real. And while some of these are only legend, they're badass legends. The only prerequisite is Celtic blood and badasses. John Graham of Claverhouse. Bonnie Dundee was a badass Jacobite hero and the Stuart faction's finest general, as he proved at the Battle of Kilcranky in 1689, where he led his Highlanders to victory over a far larger Williamite army. He also served Louis XIV in France and William of Orange in Holland with distinction, while his suppression of the Coventers at Charles II's behest brought him the nickname Bloody Clavers. Now, Bonnie Dundee or Bloody Clavers, depending on which side of the English-Scottish Civil War you were on, was John Graham of Claverhouse, Viscount Dundee and Jacobite commander, the elder son of the Royalist, descended from Robert III and a distant kinsman of Montrose. Claverhouse spent his childhood in Glen Ogilvy near Dundee, attended St. Andrew's University, and then went to France as a volunteer serving Louis XIV under the Duke of Monmouth and Mackay of Scory. He joined William of Orange in 1674, reputedly saved William's life, and was recommended to James, Duke of, no of York, at William's marriage to Mary Stuart in 1677. Returning to Scotland, he commanded an independent troop of horse raised to suppress seditious Coventers, lowland Presbyterian meetings in Dumfries and Gall Galloway, and was given additional powers as Charles II's absolutism increased. He was later blamed, and still is in some parts, for every savage atrocity committed during this period. It earned him the moniker, by his enemies, the Bloody Clavers. But in fact, he urged moderation. He warned against alienating the hearts of the people, in which he mean to rule over if successful. 1679, Coventers, a rebellion, he was defeated in Drumclog, helped defend Glasgow and fought at Bothwell Brick. His 1674 marriage into a notoriously coveting family had briefly damaged his career, but while England with the Scots army in 1688, James VII made him Viscount Dundee because his skill and badassery in battle outweighed his, his religious affiliation. Now at the time, failure to attend church was punishable by fines. When one aggressive Coventer group showed resistance, it was attacked by the Dragoons. Worshippers were hanged and the rest sent into slavery. This merely turned the Covenant into a secret army, armed for defense and ready to fight. One preacher in particular, Richard Cameron, declared open rebellion with a handful of parishioners. All were quickly killed by the Dragoons. But from that point on, the Coventers were also known as Cameronians despite the fact that it had little to do with the whole of Clan Cameron. The situation worsened with the death of King Charles II. Then came the accession of the Catholic brother James VII and II of Scotland and England to the throne. Under his rule, attending a coveting act of worship was a capital crime, and many Presbyterians paid the ultimate penalty. King James VII and II alienated all the people on whose support he depended. He was ousted from the throne in 1688, exiled to France, the last line of the Stuart to wear a crown. King James had been ousted at the request of the English Parliament by William of Orange. Now James himself accepted his exile, but one man in particular did not. One of those men was John Graham of Claverhouse, Viscount Dundee, later become Bonnie Dundee, who would decide to raise an army of liberation. Uh, Bonnie Dundee went quickly through the Highlands, gathering support and willing clansmen for an eventual war. Now, during the post-revolution convention of the states at Edinburgh, March 1689, his life was threatened and he left. He conferred with the Duke of Gordon, who held Castle Rock for the ousted James, 
Now, upon learning of Lochale's Highland Confederacy to restore James to the throne, he declared himself a rebel and raised a standard on Dundee law. He left his wife and newborn son and rode northeast to support the Jacobite cause. So begun four months and 800 miles of rapid marching beginning on the 8th of March from Inverness. He crossed uh, Corrierdic and Drumlochar passes to raid Perth on the 10th with the veteran Lochiel. He used Highland men and their skills, their tactics, and shared the clan's hardships. Lochale was hopeful that James would cross from Ireland with troops and support. Now, Lochale had repeatedly asked Claverhouse to not get directly involved in the upcoming clash with government troops because they fought the Highland way and didn't want their leader to try to fight as a wild Highlander and possibly get hurt. But Dundee insisted on fighting right alongside his men in every battle. When the news filtered south, General Hugh McKay was dispatched to crush Dundee's rebellion. McKay's government army had to go through the Pass of Kilcrinky, where it was particularly vulnerable to attack. Now, they negotiated the pass without incident, but at the head of the pass, there were the troops of Bonnie Dundee. McKay's forces followed standard English tactics of the time, firing a musket volley, then fixing bayonets to charge. However, under Bonnie Dundee's cool leadership, Dundee's wild Highlanders were upon them. Before they even had their bayonets out and flailing their claymores and screaming their battle cries, that sent shivers of horror down the backs of McKay's entire regiment. The Highland army under Dundee was completely and devastatingly effective against government forces, and the English crown took notice. It would later spawn retaliations, including the massacre at Glencoe against Highlanders from English King William of Orange. The Jacobites marched south and east, and in the Pass of Kilcranky on the 27th of July, they met 4,000 musketed men under General Hugh Mackay, lowland Scots and veterans of the Dutch Wars. They were called Williamites, as they fought for William of Orange. The Williamites outnumbered Dundee two to one, but they broke ranks under the ferocious Highland charge of the Highland clans, running in panic through the pass. It was a hard-fought battle, said Ian Loom, the Baird of Kepok. Many a cocked hat and periwig was smashed nigh the great and terrible swords of Clan Donald and the other clans. Red blood flowed in waves over the grass, and a thousand spades would be needed to level the graves of the enemy. Among the thousands of Williamites killed were also 600 Highlanders. Now, outnumbered and lacking firearms, Dundee's Highlanders swung the huge two-handed claymores mercilessly, and McKay's men were killed in thousands. This enormous sword allowed Highlanders to strike a devastating blow before the other could get close enough to attack, and the claymore was used as well to take down charging horse. Government troops were used to foot soldiers fleeing at the sight of a mounted soldier charging, but the Highlanders stood their ground and would take out the legs of the charging horse and then kill the fallen soldier. The General McKay was one of the few able to flee. It was a shocking loss to the British government forces and it sent shockwaves through a military command that was sure it was the elite. The danger of the Highland Army and its tactics was now a major problem for William and the British Parliament. The Jacobite cause had already started, was now taken more seriously than ever before. It was a total victory for Bonnie Dundee, but also, unfortunately, this badass was killed in the Battle of Kilcranky, which was his greatest victory, and the Highlanders who would follow him and take up his great cause, and they're now in the hands of a new leader who did not share the same vitality and charisma of John Graham of Claverhouse, Viscount Dundee. The war over religion and choice of king, however, was far from over. Bonnie Dundee, or John Graham, Viscount of Claverhouse, had shown the way for Highland resistance against the much more numerous government forces. He showed that a man fighting for something he believed in is worth more than a hundred men fighting because they were ordered to. His legend will live on in poems and songs forever in Scotland. <laughs>